One of the most controversial topics about React is the complexity of Redux for state management. But is Redux really a very complex tool? Personally, I have arrived at the conclusion that it's the lack of software design that makes Redux complex. What it means is that what will make it very comfortable and easier to work with this library are the architectural decisions that you have taken for building your React application. For the reason, I would like to share my personal solution that was to implement to convert my reducers into hooks and make a variant of the actions pattern by implementing the repository pattern to make the actions handling more flexible. So in this video I will only cover synchronous actions. In a later video I will show an example with a synchronous actions for API calls or mixing APIs to create a state with this design pattern. So I recommend subscribing to my channel to be notified when this information is published. Before continuing watching the video, it's very important that you are familiar with the following concepts. For this example, you can get the link of the source code on the description. Here we have some simple crude state management actions where we can create, update, and delete a customer. The customer is created randomly by a JavaScript faker, and also the same occurs when it's updated filling it with random data. Now let's take a look at the code. I will start by describing the current implementation of the customer reducer. As you can see, it's a custom hook that returns the reducer. Also, all the state management actions are separated into small functions to add, update, and remove a record. This way makes the reducer easier to read and prevent the switch case from becoming a meshy piece of code with all the state management logic inside. Another important thing to notice is that we are using TypeScript, so we can take advantage of it by typing our action. The reducer receives an action of type customer action. There we can type the type of action instead of using magic strings. Also, it's important to have a convention when naming the types. So remember that action types names must be unique. So an easy way to achieve that is to prefix them with the name of the action entity you are working. So in this case, the entity is customer. Because the customer reducer was encapsulated into a hook, we need to call it inside of a React component. So for this, we need to create the application store as a store provider component. Inside of it, it's called the use customer reducer hook and stored inside the constant customer state. Then it's registered with the help of the create store and combine reducer functions to create the store. Additionally, was added the Compose with DevTools extension to debug the Redux state from the browser. Once the store is created, it's added as a value of the React Redux provider component. Finally, to have access to the global state, the whole application must be encapsulated inside the store provider component. Then let's take a look at the customer repository. It is also a hook that groups all the action dispatch. For this example, all the actions are synchronous because they are only updating the global state. In a further video, we will see how to use this pattern to orchestrate a sync actions that depend on consuming an API. Notice again that we have typed the dispatch function with a customer action type. With this, we don't need to code magic strings. Instead of that, TypeScript will validate the type and the payload of each dispatch. Lastly, the repository hook returns all the action dispatch and the state piece where the customer data is stored, which will be used by the component that implements the use customer repository hook. Now let's make use of the use customer repository hook on a view component. Calling it will retrieve all the customer actions and state. Also, we will keep our repository object as a namespace in case that we need to use multiple repositories inside the view component, avoiding collisions of actions with the same name. Finally, we can map the customer state to render the different records 
inside a card and also we can pass the different actions for creating, updating and removing a record easily. To conclude, we can see that creating the reducer as a custom hook helps to encapsulate all the logic that is related to it and also splitting the state management actions into small functions make it more comfortable to read. Magic strings are now replaced by TypeScript types. Now the store must be tried as a component because the reducer was transformed into a hook, so inside of it all the reducer hooks must be called to build the global state. The repository pattern replaced the action pattern grouping all the dispatch actions on a hook of a related entity, giving a future more flexibility if we need to work with more complex business logic that needs to dispatch an action. The view can update the global state easily and it is a cleaner way calling a repository hook completely forgetting to handle the business logic. I hope you have enjoyed this video, see you next time.